Hi, Sharon. Hi, Daniel. Sharon. Yeah. Hi. Ah, oh, you can call me Sharon. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm sitting here in Israel, <laughs> and you there in England. And we normally have our weekly or bi-weekly meetings, and we plan to record an episode for our podcast this week. And obviously, we didn't do it. Uh, nobody was in the mood, and we couldn't even think about it. And but we decided today, which is the sixth day to the war that's going on here in Israel, to spend a few minutes and speak to one another like this and record the conversation. Um, yeah, so, and use our platforms, our podcasts to spread the word and, you know, if people want to hear what it's like in Israel and what it's like being an Israeli, living outside of Israel, maybe, you know, they'll get a better sense of what everybody's going through and it's not normal. It's not, it's, it's a type of civil advocacy uh, uh, I guess but it's a little bit different from a different angle it's got nothing to do with our businesses um, what else oh we wanted to say wine video do you want to explain yeah, wine that? video and wine English because people okay, don't do usually that. used to That's hearing right. us speak like that so right wine video because we want to do to provide a different view and to show our faces to show what it's like to go through this period in time and just to see what we can get out of it in, in regards to what we can share, how we can show this situation besides uh, speaking, besides letting people hear yeah. our voices to do it on a yeah. different platform, even in our YouTube channels or whatever. Um, and why in English? Because I believe most of the people, including my friends and family back in Israel, don't really ever get the chance to hear me speak English, besides the people who know me here. And um, the people here, my, our friends, our community, they don't really get a chance to see me speaking to another Israeli, another person living in Israel, going through the same situation as we are going through here. And, and in English. And in English. So Okay. So we basically, when we were thinking about what to say, is mostly to talk about our feelings and to describe a little bit what uh, the day-to-day -day is like on my end and on your end and a little bit about how we're both self-employed. We run our own uh, small businesses and what it's like at this time to be basically without work um which is fine it really isn't the most important thing but at some point you start thinking about it because everything else you know carries on ticking the accounts and everything else so shall we start with just um i don't know talk about our feelings at the, these days how we able to even i don't know function sleep eat what it's like there what it's like here um first of all i have to say as I said before, I feel like physically I'm here in England, but in my heart, in my mind, I'm back in Israel. I'm of watching course. news all day long in Hebrew, trying to mediate to the kids some of the information we receive, not all, uh, as in, you can understand, but... and. I, I'm trying to be a member of the community here, trying to support other Israelis living here, try to support my family back in Israel. Uh, but it's really hard. And we keep hearing stories about our family and our members. We have some of them who had to leave their have home. Who suffered losses. Mm. Who suffered losses. And we can hear it from all the people we know back in Israel. I don't think there's yeah. one Israeli not impacted by this situation. Absolutely. And and the feelings are hard. I have to tell you that the first few days, I'm sure most Israeli can empathize with this. We couldn't even function. We couldn't even set up a, 
dinner or breakfast or whatever. It, it was hard getting out of bed. It was difficult so, to sleep. And difficult to sleep, difficult to, to talk to the kids. Whenever I try to talk to the kids and try to explain why mom and dad are, are crying, are looking, are staying in the room, staying in the bed, not really able to speak, just watching television in Hebrew, trying to catch up with the news. It's really hard. And your kids are pretty young. And my kids are young, so, yeah. So And they don't really know what what is a terrorist. They, they've been living here for the past three years. So for them, the reality that they know is English. They don't really yeah. know what, what it is to, to be in a war, to be in a state that is constantly being attacked by other people. Lucky for they them. They don't know the difference between being a Jew and being an Israeli and being a person of the world and the person who is connected to many friends and families and communities distant from where we are. Was it well, like on to, our for side, you? Yeah, on our side, uh, we're obviously here in, in the middle of Israel, in, cent in the center of Israel, that's where I live. And we've had quite a few red alerts, which means that all of a sudden your phone just goes off, goes off and because we all have like apps that uh, alert when there's uh, going to be a, a Iron Dome intercepting the the rockets and obviously the, the siren goes off in the neighborhood and in the city and we all run to the shelter and we've had that a few times besides Saturday morning, which was like... I, I'm going to divert, uh, divert a little bit, but Saturday morning, 6.30, when it went off and we all like woke up. I woke up early, okay, normally on a Saturday, um, but around a quarter to seven, seven o'clock, 6.30. I never put an alarm. It just goes off. I just wake up. And uh, when it went off, in my heart of heart, I knew that this is something different. I don't know why. I tried to go back to bed for maybe half an hour. I couldn't sleep. Uh, there were no reports yet of what happened. You know, we heard a few uh, Iron Dome interceptions, uh, but I decided to go to the to the lounge and you know put on the TV and watch something, which is what I normally would do if I get up too early on a Saturday before I go to exercise or whatever. And at some point, maybe around seven fifteen or seven thirty, I I switch to Israeli TV. Normally, I just like I'm on Nef Netflix or something. And I start seeing that, you know, the the usual channels, 12, 13, 11, that they're starting to report live and that something's happening. And, um, yeah, and that's it. That's it. Uh, and after a couple of hours, everybody went back to bed, my, my kids, my husband. And after about two, three hours, I woke my husband up and I said, listen, this, this wasn't just a red alert. It wasn't just uh, Iron Dome intercepting uh, a rocket it's it's actually it's a uh, i don't know what what word to use but something's going on this is like way way bigger than than we've ever known and and that was at 10 o'clock in the morning it like little did we know what we we're going to find out later yeah and since then it's been basically nothing in the first few days we just you know we were at home um Everything stopped. Everything stopped. Just about everything stopped. I, uh, even at, at some point, yeah, I think the supermarkets weren't open the first couple of days. Everybody was scared. We didn't know what was going on. We were all glued to the TV and to our phones. And we kept getting, um, uh, you know, on TV and everywhere, stay at home, don't go out. You know, there are terrorists out there and you don't know where to, to where they might get to. And... Uh, so obviously there's no school, there was no school, there is no school yet. Uh, we don't know, the, s the kids were supposed to go back to school on Sunday or Monday and uh, they're saying that maybe on Sunday they will go back, but I don't know, I don't know. And I think a lot of parents are not going to send the kids even in more the, s the central areas. Yeah. Um, the gym closed, obviously. <laughs> um, it only opened, I think, yesterday. And But again, I went to a class this morning and it was 
very difficult to concentrate. At some point, there was also, we started hearing uh, Iron Dome intercepts, even though there wasn't a red alert, and everybody started scrambling. And and then, <laughs> the, the, you know, the teacher just did some, you know, some relax, relaxing thing, and we just finished, because you can't concentrate on anything. You basically, mm -hmm. like... Uh, yeah, let alone work, let alone just about anything. You just you eat because you have to. You sleep at some point because you have to. And the first few nights we slept with the TV on the whole night, which we never do. Um, yeah. Uh, it's uh, And amidst all that, I must say that I had a few things with clients that I needed to do some meetings and you know they asked me and I asked them is it okay can you know you're okay to do the meeting and I said you know if you're okay we, um you know let's do it and we did it on zoom obviously um but other than that everything got cancelled obviously what else uh no marketing you can't even I can't even think of doing anything to do with marketing or business development or I think the most I could I could do these days is just play around on Excel. <laughs> That's the only thing that um, gave me some, I can't even say joy, uh, but it was something I can do, you know, just because it's so mechanical. Just to keep maybe. yourself busy. Yeah. Not to think about the situation. Yeah. Yeah. For us, we I heard my husband was on the phone with his father and he was in the bathroom and I heard him through the door. I on Saturday? My, my father-in-law, it just, it was half past six in the morning, which is half past eight in Israel. And they were just starting to get the reports. They were only glued to the TV. Yeah. And, and and I just heard him say, like, terrorists infiltrated Israel and started shooting. And right, right then we knew something horrible was happening. We didn't know the, the details. I didn't know if my brother-in-law was safe. We didn't know where they are, were because they're religious. And so we didn't know if oh. it's, it was a Shabbat. So we didn't have any way to contact them. Um, eventually we found out they, they weren't home, luckily, because they live really close by to where it all happened. Not close by, in the middle. Oy. And it was really hard, and we just we slept for that night, maybe a couple of hours. And I tried to go back to sleep to catch a few more hours just to keep my strength. But really, it was really hard to to even process yes. what what's what's been going on, what happened. And it's still happening. Yeah. The, the war just begun. People are still losing their loved ones, their family, their friends. I keep hearing for my family members. The son of this person has died. The daughter of this person has died. A member of our I know. previous building where we have a home in, in Israel did some... Mirac miraculous act of saving some girl from a trunk and while she was being kidnapped to the, the strip. All these stories, they keep piling up. They keep messing with our soul. You know, and even I am keep thinking that the word story is, is, is not the right word. I'm trying to it's not the right find word. what it's, the right it's, word is. It's so difficult. It's It's... Because story sounds oh, like a story, you know, like a yeah. story on Instagram. It's not. It's 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 not. I, it, I can't find the right word. You know, I wish I could find the right word. Something because, that happened. Um, I don't know how to describe it better because it's, it's it's the reality that we live through. And I was just talking to a friend who is also in Israel, living here um, earlier today, and we talked about how we are all post-traumatized, no matter what age we are. As long as you're an Israeli, you've been through something. You've been through war, you've been through attacks, you've been through... Fear. Intifada back then in, in 2000. Yeah. You've been through a lot. 
and as as a young mother, I remember there was I don't even recall which or which operation, which war was it, but I remember taking both my girls, my husband was in the idea of okay, time probably in two thousand fourteen yeah, yeah. 13? Mm-hmm. No, maybe one 14, year later. 14. 14. No, yeah, no, yeah, no. yeah. Because that's 14, the one. There, there were well, only one well. year. And I remember taking them. Yeah, I think I was, I was even at the beginning of the pregnancy with my son or, or just before that. And I just picked them up. I have twin girls. I just picked them up with both my hands and ran to the shelter in our apartment. And the window was closed and I closed the door. And I was just panicked. And whenever I talk about these feelings, I just, it all comes back, back again. Listen, I, I, I con- I'm co- constantly fighting an urge to vomit. Yeah. It's like sitting here and I yeah. keep pushing it down. And every time there's a new name and you hear the families recounting or you just see the names being... being called yeah. out on the TV and the ages oh my god they're also most of them are so young I'm not even talking about the, the people from the rave they're also mostly young but the soldiers and from the kibbutzim there and every it's like and the babies and the kids I, I don't know even it's 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 I range it from it's unfathomable wanting you to vomit and wanting um, to to let my rage out I don't know How else to, to scream it? yeah what to scream, scream or to scream. cry or to yeah and we, oh, and we have to keep it together because we have kids and you know you can't yeah really do that I just um, saw a drawing yesterday I believe you saw it as well of um yes an artist from the caricature Maritz. yeah caricature of a mother trying to protect her her girl from all the evil yeah I saw that it describes exact exactly what we're feeling as mothers as parents as people as people yeah it, 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 the, the the normal person's brain can't comprehend these kind of things especially not this day and age you know we've yeah it, things happened horrible things happened like this in the Holocaust in the 1930s 1940s. Yes, ISIS, <coughs> yes, Al-Qaeda. But you think that, you know, these things were eradicated and you, you don't think that people can be as evil these days. You know, there is some kind of... Yeah, there's know, a feeling because of technology, be- because of the, the year we're living in, the, the, the century, the decade we're living in, that everything is modern. We've gone past it. That we it became better that we than the people working. living in 1940s for example our grandparents but it's not humanity remained the same evil remained the same nothing changes huh nothing changes I wonder if things are going to change after this I hope that they do because we know uh, <laughs> it's like we're missing COVID now you know we think oh COVID was a piece of, um, and it wasn't it wasn't you know with all due respect it really wasn't yeah But all of a sudden, it seems like, you know, I'd rather have co- be in the COVID era and not in this era. And at least with COVID, um, it was a virus, not people killing not each other. Not human beings, exactly. Not human beings. Uh, and I don't... They're not human beings. The whole I thing. don't consider them But they're not human, human beings. beings. No. There are beings. There are... I, I don't even know what to, how to call them. We were talking um, earlier, before we started recording, about... People abroad, people on the outside looking in to Israel, mm-hmm. trying to rationalize the, the attack, trying to la- rationalize everything that's been going on or ignore it altogether, or not even speak. And I'm trying to explain to our friends over here who are part Jewish, part not Jewish or English or... whatever I'm trying to explain to them what we've been through what we're going through right now what our children are experiencing even though we try to 
keep them away from the news. And it's really hard. I, I'm really lost for words right now. And even maybe they hear this and understand it. Hopefully, when it, they hear this, they could somehow relate, somehow try to comprehend some of the feelings, some of the reality that we are facing now. Yeah. Well, another reality I can tell you that I'm, you know, my study is in the shelter in our apartment and I can show and I will also talk because some people will be listening as a podcast and not a video. So I found this old very old, I think it's over 30 years old, transistor radio that works also on batteries. And it works. It took us a long time to find it in our <laughs> um, deposit. You know, we have a deposit with a lot of things downstairs. And I kind of, I gave up on finding it because we couldn't find it. And then my husband the other day said to himself, no, 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 it has to be somewhere. I thought I gave it away or threw it out. But uh, it turns out that I kept it and just as well. Not that I think we're going to get to use it, but you never know because... Uh, Two, d two or three days ago, everybody was panicked here because they said you have to have a, a, some kind of radio, some kind of means of communication, of, of getting communication that is not based on electricity. And yeah. nobody has those kind of things these days. And that doesn't rely even on, um, on Wi-Fi or Internet. And who has that? But yes, I found one and it works. <laughs> so uh, I have that here batteries obviously and I have um, you can see here I have a, a mattress uh, if we need to sleep here obviously and I have some chairs and other things behind this curtain and I have food and uh, water and a bucket and charges you know for the for the cell phones like spare spare ones cordless ones um, yeah so if we hopefully we won't need to use it but we have to be prepared and everybody's like was scrambling to get oh, all sorts of things um oh uh, yeah so another thing which i wanted to to talk about to just to explain what it's like here i'm on a million whatsapp groups in the neighborhood uh work um all sorts of walks of life for just about anything there's a whatsapp group and i joined some others now to deal with um uh, with the civil advocacy, uh, especially people speaking other languages like I do, and uh, they want as many as possible to, you know, to 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 put up things on their social media, uh, and uh, the amount of information that goes on, it's just my phone and my WhatsApp were at some point collapsing. Um, it's always very busy, but not like this. And and you can see people are not even reading what we write. We, I was involved in all sorts of uh, volunteer um, organizations of uh, you know getting food and and uh, toiletries and all sorts of things to either the soldiers or the reserve uh, duty soldiers or people that have been evacuated from their homes and. You know, you, people send messages. Okay, you can bring this and this and that from this time to this time to that place. And everything is written very clearly, yet people don't read. They keep, they keep like, because I also advertised a few of those and they keep phoning me and writing to me personally. Where must we bring it? And it's all written there. So, like, you see the people, at the best of times, people are not very good at reading, <laughs> in the, yeah, even no. when, you, when it's written very clearly. Now it's even worse. At some point I was just getting so impatient because uh, people that I know phone me and I say, but it's all written there. Like, uh, you know, n nobody likes answering phone calls. <laughs> and when you answer a phone call and they ask you to to answer something that's already written there and uh, like everything just like, you know, you're so jumpy. And so yeah. people don't read and people like keep sending the same mes messages that somebody else wrote two minutes before. They keep sending the same videos and the same... Wow, it's like crazy, um, and uh, but, everybody's but doing. But we do have to say that the the Israeli spirit. Yes, I was. The volunteers. Say that. It's amazing. Yes. Yeah, we. we I feel even here, 
that everyone is united, everyone is rallying for Israel, everyone is volunteering, collecting donation, collecting food, just bombarding the soldiers, the, the reserves with everything that's good everything that is no no it, it's definitely amazing it, it, it's, it's actually, really uplifting to see that from the eyes yeah. from the outside but i think living through it it's even more uplifting even more it is uh but i kept thinking all the time are these things actually going to get to the right place that they need to get to or they're going to be thrown at some point and um, i'm sure more some of it a will lot be of thrown, it will but be thrown most out. of it is is getting to the right places. I hope so. I really hope so because um, you know people are really donating from, you know, from their own pockets. And yeah. as I said, not everybody's pockets are going to be very lined up uh, at the end of this because uh, not everybody's uh, salaries are going to carry on ticking. Um, and people that are self-employed, I suppose most are not creating much work these days. Like you know, in my case and your case as well. Yeah, because you also work with Israelis, um, so it's yeah, it is very uplifting. But uh, I think we always have to be a little bit cautious as well, because um, if we donate and donate, and we've also been donating money, not just things, mm -hmm. you have to think of yourself as well and make sure that. And not all the banks have given you know extra. Uh, credit or extra, I don't know, things. Some have, by the way, but, um, um, and, and you know, a lot of the big things, like the big systems, as big systems do, they work, they don't work as quickly as the, the, the us small people would do. Yeah. So that's why I think there's a lot of these, um, private initiatives, but today, I started seeing that the Bituach um, Lumi, which is like the national, uh, it's not like the NHS, it's more like no, national, it's, uh, uh, national social insurance. security. Social, insurance, social security, yeah. I think, would be the equivalent in America. Yeah. Already put up a new, like a new thing in there on a site with, uh, I put it up on my Facebook, by the way, a link that explains like what to do on what facilities there are, both financially and um emotionally if you are uh if you've been like a victim of one of these crimes or if you have family that if you've lost family or even if you are if you have a panic attack you know because a lot of people are going to be panic stricken and there's also yes. facilities to I mean, so many people here and, and we like we are nothing compared to the people that are you know, the first line and people that have also been doing the important yet horrific work of dealing with the bodies and they're going to be traumatized for life. Then themselves, yeah. they will also need support. Um, so, yeah, so these big organizations, these big um, institutions are finally doing things to... To show, you know, it takes time to organize. You can't organize it within a few hours. It takes a few days. Yeah. So things are starting to, you know, people are starting to think already about tomorrow and about next week and next month and money and all those kind of things. So, yeah. So just be careful not to, you know, think about yourself as well, even though money is not the important thing right now. Yeah. But it is important because I saw someone who wrote about it earlier today on Facebook. As people living through this, as business owners, we experience a different kind of anxiety, I think, um, on top of the, the regular anxi anxiety we're experiencing of what will happen with my business, what will happen with my income. Exactly. Because it's... We, we really don't want to think about it because we're trying to stay in the moment and try, trying to be there for our friends and family and trying to be there for our kids. But it is something we're thinking about and it is important to keep going. If you have any clients, just keep in touch, see how they are. Yeah. Try to keep the work going 
if you can, if it's possible. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I mean, but if you have. But for um, some of us, it's 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 been it's quite possible. As you said, I have only Israeli clients, and I was planning on doing a marketing event next week, and yeah, I was, was going to ask middle you about of the that. campaign, and just shut everything down because it's it's really not the time I, and i don't really have the energy to deal with anything right now so i just stopped it and i'm supposed to send a message to everyone who registered for it and it will be postponed to another time i don't know when i was supposed to have a meeting today with a client and i also postponed it to a different time because she's with her kids and she's not really available to do that. And it's hard because we have to think about now and we have to think about how we're coping with the day-to-day. But we also have to think about the future, the next few weeks, few months, what we're going to do. Yeah. So I think if we can give any advice, any thoughts about this matter that might help someone, that'd be good. Well, as I said, the only thing I can think of really is donate, but don't go overboard if you can't afford it. There are lots of people who can afford it, by the way. I've seen, Mm -hmm. I've been shown uh, donations that are being made by millionaires who can afford it. So, good. Um, I think... The but someone who can, can donate right time or donate from our experience, our knowledge, our expertise. Exactly. exactly. So, that's another way to to participate, to exactly. help another person. Even if it's only just calling a friend or texting a friend on WhatsApp in and asking, how are you? How are you yeah. doing how are you dealing with the kids? How are you dealing with work? And just be there for one another. Yeah. And that's all I've been doing for the past few days because that, that's all I can It's all you can do of. from where, from where yeah. you are. Um, and I can say that on, uh, as I said earlier, my WhatsApp and my phone are like, whoa, I've never seen them like that. But one thing that I try to do every day is go into my media and delete because... Um, I normally hardly ever download anything that's uh, that comes through my WhatsApp because I have it defined that way. But I do now, you know, because there are some videos that are being sent that are important or some pictures or, I don't know, PDFs. But I try every few hours and certainly every day to go through and just delete, delete, delete before the WhatsApp does its um, backup and if it goes into my Google photos to also go there and delete what's not necessary, keep some things, yes. Um, and obviously put away in my Dropbox or wherever uh, things that are important, but also keep the phone with space because, you know, we can very, you know, in the next few days people are going to find that their phones are just like running out of space because of all these big uh, videos that are each are a few gigabytes sometimes or many many megabytes so try and make more space so that you can also record and you can also receive other things um i, I think i think also our mental capacity of. to watch videos of what's been happening we really need to screen the intake to decide what we want to see what's important for us to see right now and we can empathize with other people without seeing the horrors without no, I'm not seeing even all talking the blood. about those kind of things for example friend sent me from overseas sent me videos of rallies support rallies that have been happening in Mm-hmm. Buenos Aires and Toronto and Vancouver and uh, all sorts of uh, or rallies that are pro-Palestinian and actually from South Africa that happened I think yesterday and and you you know you watch a few it's like they're normally a minute or two they're not long I, I watch them once and I delete them because 
uh, you know, I'm not even talking about the atrocities. I'm just talking about all yeah. the, which it is very heartwarming, you know, to receive support and everything. But you can see it normally on social media anyway, and you don't need to keep it. So I'm talking about even those kind of things. Or so, yeah. So that's the only kind of tip that I can think of to give that and you know donate your time donate your abilities if you're very good at doing something um offer maybe it's needed somewhere even if it's something that you think is weird um but i think these days it, it what happened is going to ripple through every single walk of life okay even in places that you don't think about because it just it, it's literally a ripple effect okay um, everything and everybody is affected. So your particular skills in something that you think is very esoteric might be exactly what is needed somewhere that you'd never thought would be needed. And if you can volunteer that, even if it's for a few days, um, it's it's also great. It doesn't have to be, as you said, money. Uh, yeah. But on the other hand, I think also I, even the feeling when, when you're helping someone else, it it's helping you to yeah release some of the distress to occupy yourself with something that's not related to just watching the news or being concerned with the situation. And that's exactly why we it's really this, helpful by to be way. yeah. Well, why are we yeah. recording this? Because it's helping us and um, maybe, you know, it'll help one or two people Maybe as it will well. help someone. Even if it's to yeah. understand. And another thing I wanted to, wanted to tell you or talk to you about is, um, it's, a lot of people don't understand why it's happened, or, you know, about the history of the, conf the conflict. Okay, what a word. Um, there's a lot of explanations out there. People can't say, well, you know, I was told, I thought, no, go and read, listen, compare. Don't be brainwashed because some celebrity or some, I don't know, are supporting this. Don't be blind. Read up about it, okay? And compare sources, read or listen or there's a lot of celebrities uh, that are uh, doing amazing amazing work in explaining things um i've just i've discovered a lot of celebs that i didn't even know and they're doing such amazing work so you know maybe we can even put in the notes a few of the links to a few of them yeah i think i have okay. a few links to share but i think for me um, in my feeds on instagram and facebook to see Jewish people, or even not Jewish people, from around the world, celebrities, influencers, whatever they are following, seeing them supporting, seeing them sharing. It's been really uplifting to, to see that. Yeah. And I even texted one of them, which was an entrepreneur from, from the US that I'm following for the past, I don't know, two years. And she shared something about, I, I don't even recall what she shared, but she just put it on their story and oh, I didn't know that. got so many good and bad comments. So I had to, I had to support her and to let her know that it really helps. It really means something for us as Israelis, as Jews, to see people pay attention, to see people use their platforms in a right way. Okay. Okay, listen, I think I'm um, having some technical issues here, so I think we need to kind of wrap it up, but it's been great speaking to you like this yeah. and not just on WhatsApp. Um, and... Um, <laughs> You too. We'll release this to the world and hope it helps someone, really. It helped it, me, I must say. So, me too. Great. And I'm happy we did it in English because I'm eager to send it to all my friends over wow. here. Very brave of you and to do it in English yeah. and brave of me to do it with video. 
I must say, because yeah. I'm not a big Actually, fan of video. <laughs> the, the, the people I'm most scared of sharing this with are my family because I don't believe they ever heard me talk I like this. I think they're going to be astounded. <laughs> they only hear me speak Hebrew, so they're yeah. Gonna they're going to be astounded. They're going to be proud so. of you. So I'm proud of you. Oh, <laughs> Amazing. You. Uh, yeah, I got a... I think it was the first time you ever yes, heard exactly, me speak. Yes, so. exactly. Exactly. I'm going to ask you to do it again next time we do a, an episode, uh, a, a professional episode. Yeah. We'll do it in English. <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe. Great idea. Yeah. Okay. On that note, I'm sending you a big hug, and um, to all you. the listeners. Back to you. And yeah, we'll do a quick, quick edit, I think. We're not even going to run it through the usual uh, sound yeah. editing and we're going to put it on both our uh, um, podcasts and send it to the world. And if anyone wants to reach out, DM, text, whatever, ask anything, you're more than welcome to contact us and we'll be happy to to talk to anyone about this matter or anything. Yep. We're going to put all the links in our uh, yeah. descriptions of this episode. <laughs>